What's a bigger priority for you in Peel? Is it fixing what you've got right now or building new stuff to accommodate all the new development that's happening? Wow, that's a good question. I would say um, historically, the focus has been on maintaining our existing infrastructure system. We've got over $28 billion in assets in just the water and wastewater infrastructure. So that's a massive program just to maintain it. But more recently, it's the growth infrastructure that's really become priority for us. In our upcoming budget for 2025, we're looking at 80% of our capital budget is going to be for growth infrastructure. Hmm. that new infrastructure. If you don't mind, Steve, Please. you have to do both. And this is the really difficult balancing act for municipalities is given our limited resources, financial resources and people too. I mean, there's only so many people in the industry. How do you do both? How do you deal with your areas of largest, largest risk while you're making sure that you're still providing the ability for the community to grow uh, as well, because both are important? Well, you've got an even bigger problem, I would suspect, in Hamilton and Brampton in as much as Hamilton is a city that's two, more than 200 years old. You've got some real old stuff there, presumably. Oh, uh, we absolutely do. And I would say it's a different challenge. I mean, mm. we have in Hamilton, the second oldest water system in Canada, the third oldest wastewater system. Uh, and mm. when you think of uh, relying in some cases on infrastructure that is as much as 120 years old, uh, ironically, sometimes that's your most robust infrastructure because there were different manufacturing practices and things uh, historically. But it does carry an element of risk. And you know, as I said to our own city council just this past Monday, when you're in the water business running a utility, it is very much about risk management and where can you tolerate risk? Where do you have operational programs in place uh, that allow you to mitigate things? And where do you absolutely have to move forward with a fast track or preferably a planned capital intervention? Michelle, we have, or I shouldn't say we, the province of Ontario has set a very ambitious goal to build a million and a half homes by the year 2031 and that means uh, all of you are sort of on the hook to make sure that we've got water systems that can accommodate that kind of growth. Talk to us about the biggest challenges that people who do for a living what you folks do for a living have in order to accommodate that future growth. It's it's multifaceted in terms of of how the municipalities are being tasked to approach this. It's we tend to forecast out 20 to 30 years uh, with the master plans and the capital plans. And when those targets are moving very quickly, uh, there's not always enough money in the bank to do it. And so we need to look at other funding tools or financing tools to allow municipalities to quickly deliver the infrastructure that's needed to support that growth. Um, I think there's an opportunity for better alignment with developers and timing of when those expansions are actually needed and when um, the municipality is able to start collecting on those rates, water user rates and property taxes, and also better alignment with some of the other uh, water users, big business, um, the, the province itself in terms of education and healthcare, because those can all pose significant demands on, on a water and wastewater system in terms of supporting that growth. Keely, what would you add to that in terms of what you've got to do to be ready for the kind of growth anticipated? Yeah, I would agree with all of what Michelle has just said. One of the, the big challenges with growth infrastructure is finding that delicate balance between having the infrastructure ready in advance of the growth coming on. Because when we're talking about water and wastewater, those take years, decade, can take a decade to construct, and it needs to be in the ground and ready before the development happens, before the homes are built. So you need to anticipate and work with the industry to understand when it's coming forward because it's debt financed as well. Municipalities issue debt, and in our case, this is significant debt that we're looking at over the next 20 years to accommodate the, the massive growth that's coming. And there's a risk to municipalities that if we build that infrastructure and they don't come, then we're carrying those costs until it's eventually paid back through the development charges. Let me do a quick follow-up. You got any idea how much money you're spending over the next 20 years on all this? We um, are estimating at this point about $17 billion in water and wastewater infrastructure over the next 20 years to accommodate the new housing pledges. That's real money. <laughs> That's big money. That is big money. Barbara, so, what would you add? Yeah, I would add that, um, so another way to find this capacity in our mm -hmm. sewer, in our uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. pardon me, sewers and water, it, it, it would be to use the infrastructure we have better. So to reduce leakages in water systems, average water leakage across Ontario is 13%, 14%. That means 14% of the water that we treat and pump from the water 
uh, treatment station uh, doesn't arrive at people's homes. It, get lo it gets lost in the ground. So if we could reduce that water loss, there, we have ways of reducing water loss. It's not easy, but I mean, there are municipalities sitting at 40, 50% water loss. I mean, it could be very high. Um, and equally in sewers, as, as you know, our sewers are practically full of clean water that should not be there. That's rainwater and groundwater getting into sewers. Well, getting that water out of sewers would free up the capacity, some of the capacity. It's not going to cover all our development, but it's a much more inexpensive way. And I, I would encourage municipalities to get back to basics and maintaining our infrastructure and, and freeing up this capacity that's being used um, uh, for inappropriate uses.